Get ready to dive into the world of structural analysis. In this week's Pass the FE Exam episode, we'll tackle a key structural engineering topic from the FE Exam, calculating the maximum bending moment of a loaded 20-foot beam. Using mathematical models and real-world examples, we'll walk through the calculations and discuss their significance in structural design. Whether you're a student or a practicing engineer, this video will help you strengthen your understanding of fundamental structural principles for the FE exam. This problem was created by and solved by mechatronic engineer Shante Thunderspey and is brought to you by our sponsor, School of PE. Before we get started, here's a word from our sponsor for today's episode, School of PE. Are you putting off preparing for licensure? Waiting for life to slow down so you have time to prep? Months from now, you could find yourself still waiting for the right time. Or you could start preparing today with School of PE. Take the guesswork out of exam prep. With 93% pass rates, expert instructors, and a pass guarantee, you'll be walking into that exam fully prepared. Make the right choice today. Enroll now and save 32% with promo code EMI32 at schoolofpe.com. That's S-C-H-O-O-L of P-E.com. In today's problem, we are tasked with analyzing a 20 feet long, simply supported beam subjected to both a point load and a uniformly distributed load. The point load is applied at a distance of 5 feet from support A, while the uniformly distributed load of 2 kips per feet is applied across the entire span of the beam. Our goal is to determine the maximum bending moment in the beam. To evaluate this problem, we'll use the relationships defined by the FE handbook. According to the handbook, the shear force and bending moment in a beam are directly related to the applied loading on the system. Specifically, the load W of X will be equal to the derivative of the shear force with respect to X, and the shear force V of X is the derivative of the bending moment. These equations will also work in reverse. By integrating the shear force, we obtain the bending moment and by integrating the distributed load, we can determine the shear force. In addition to these formulas, the FE handbook also reminds us of the sign convention to use when solving these problems. Positive shear causes the right side of the section to move downward, while a positive moment causes concave upward bending. We'll apply these definitions to construct shear and moment expressions across each segment of the beam allowing us to calculate the exact point where the bending moment reaches its maximum value. Let's get right into it. To find the maximum moment in the beam due to the applied loads, we first need to determine the beam's reactions at its supports. We label these loads RA and RB respectively, and with these forces labeled and accounted for, we can apply the equations of static equilibrium to this system. These equations are based on the fundamental principle that the sum of the vertical forces in a system must equal zero, and similarly, the sum of the moments about any point in the system must also equal zero. To apply these equations, we first need to determine an equivalent force for the distributed load W. The total load intensity is found by multiplying the given Given uniform load intensity, 2 kips per feet, by the beam's length of 20 feet, resulting in an equivalent load of 40 kips. This means that the distributed loading can be replaced by a single concentrated force of 40 kips acting at the centroid of the distribution, which in this case is the midpoint of the beam. We go ahead and replace this loading in our diagram, and with this equivalent load known, we can now calculate the reactions at the supports, RA and RB. Starting with reaction RB, we can take the moment about point A and set the sum of these moments equal to zero. Here we'll assume that a positive moment acts in the anti-clockwise direction. The moment about point A due to the point load is 10 kips multiplied by the distance to this point, which is 5 feet. Next, we add the moment due to the equivalent load, 40 kips, multiplied by the distance from point A to the beam center at 10 feet. Lastly, we account for our unknown load, RB, which is applied at a distance of 20 feet from point A. When summing the moments about point A, we stick to our chosen sign convention. 
Therefore, the moments from the applied loads are added as positive terms, while the moment from the reaction force RB is subtracted from the equilibrium equation. What's important to note here is that when applying the equations of static equilibrium, you're free to choose either clockwise or anti-clockwise as your positive moment direction, as long as you're consistent throughout the problem. However, when drawing shear and moment diagrams or interpreting your results, be sure to apply the FE handbook's given sign convention. Next, we reorder this equation to solve for the reaction force RB and find that it has a value of 22.5 kips. Now with reaction RB known, we can go ahead and calculate RA. We do this by applying the equation for vertical force equilibrium, taking an upward force as positive. Looking at our beam, we see that both reaction forces RA and RB are acting in the upward or positive direction, while the applied loads act in the negative direction. This means our equilibrium equation can be defined as RA negative F negative FW plus RB is equal to zero. We can then substitute the values for each of these variables and rearrange our equation to solve for RA. From this, we find that the reaction force RA has a magnitude of 27.5 kips. With the support reactions known, we can proceed by evaluating the shear force along the length of the beam, moving from the left end at support A to the right end at support B. However, what's important to consider here is that we'll be using the full distributed loading W and not its equivalent point load we found earlier. We start with the first section of the beam between A and the point load at 5 feet. At point A, the shear force starts with a reaction force from the support, which we've already found as 27.5 kips. Then, as we move to the right from support A, the uniformly distributed load steadily reduces the shear force. Mathematically, the shear force equation for this section of the beam can then be described as RA negative WX. We can use this shear formula to calculate the shear force at the end of this section. But remember, when we substitute 5 feet here, the formula is giving us the shear force at the point just before this location, and not exactly at it. Doing this, we find that over the first 5 feet, the uniform loading has reduced the shear force by 10 kips, giving us a shear of 17.5 kips in the beam just before that point load is applied. Moving on to the next section of the beam, we notice that the point load will cause a sudden drop in shear force equal to the magnitude of the load itself. This causes an immediate 10 kip drop, bringing the shear force down to just 7.5 kips at the applied load. Now, continuing to the right of the point load, the distributed loading keeps reducing the shear force. We account for this and find that the shear force equation for this section can be described as 7.5 negative W times X negative 5, where the 7.5 kips is the shear we just calculated at the point load. And we once again subtract the effect of the distributed load from this equation. Here, we also use the term X negative 5 instead of just X, since the distributed load in the first section of the beam has already been accounted for. We use this equation and substitute x is equal to 20 to find that the shear just before the end of the beam has a value of negative 22.5 kips. This is an important checkpoint for equilibrium. Right after this, at support B, the upward reaction of RB brings the shear force back to zero, as required for equilibrium to be satisfied. We already know that the shear force in the beam is directly related to the bending moment through their derivatives. This means that the moment will reach a maximum wherever the shear is equal to zero, since that's where the slope of the moment diagram becomes flat. Let's take a look at the shear force values we've found up until now. At a distance of exactly 5 feet along the beam, the shear force is 7.5 kips. However, at 20 feet, the shear force becomes negative 22.5 kips. And this change in sign indicates that the shear force must pass through zero at some point between 5 feet and 20 feet. To find the exact location of this point, we'll use the equation we derived for this section of the beam. Into this equation, we substitute the shear as 0, the distributed loading W as 2, and we rearrange the equation to solve for x. In doing so, we find the location at 8.75 feet. Next, to find the value of the bending moment at this location, we'll need to integrate the shear force equations we derived earlier. However, since we have two discrete equations governing the shear in the beam, we'll also have to split this integral in two. We begin with the first section by substituting the shear equation 27.5 negative 2x 
and we evaluate this integral over the range from 0 to 5 feet. We follow a similar procedure for the second section of the beam, substituting the shear equation as 7.5 negative 2 times x negative 5. This integral is evaluated from 5 feet to 8.75 feet, or otherwise the location where the moment will be at its maximum. We can integrate these functions using the basic power rule of integration. In doing so, we increase the x exponent of each term by 1, and then we divide that term by its new exponent. Next, we apply the integration limits by substituting them into each respective equation and subtracting the results. In the first case, we substitute the upper value of 5, which gives 27.5 times 5, negative 2 times 5 squared, divided by 2. Since the lower limit of this integral is 0, substituting it will also result in 0. So we simply work with this first term. For the second integral, we do the same. First, we substitute the upper limit of x is equal to 8.75, giving 7.5 times 8.75, negative 8.75, negative 5 squared. Then we substitute the lower limit of x is equal to 5, which gives 7.5 times 5, negative 5, negative 5 squared. We subtract this lower limit from the upper limit. From here, we can use our calculator to evaluate this expression. Finally find that the maximum bending moment in the beam is equal to 126.56 kips feet. And that wraps up our problem. By closely inspecting the multiple choice answers, we see that the correct answer is equal to C. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will answer more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button as you will get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below this video, and I will read and respond to them in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a question you need answered. Pass the FE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam.